Now the front balls for the Stella come in three different sizes. They come in 683, 689 and 697. Um, and the reason why we did smaller ball sizes for the front, there's a common misperception that the actual ball travels down the front of the barrel and doesn't touch the sides. That is completely and utterly false. We found through um, testing and through high speed video looking through glass barrels as balls were fired, that the ball always touches in the front of the barrel. When you shoot a large number of re-balls through a two-piece barrel, you'll actually see where rubber starts building up in the front of the barrel from multiple impacts over time. And by testing hundreds of thousands of shots, we actually saw that build up in the front of the barrels. You can also do the test where if you take Tolkien powder, put it in the front of your barrel, fire a ball, you'll see it leave lines in the front. So the paintball always hits the front of the barrel. Again, basic physics, there's always a gap on one side of the paintball because they're not perfectly round, which is larger than the other side. Um, air moves faster in the large gap, slower in the small gap. You get a pressure differential on both sides, it pushes the ball across, it always hits in the front of the barrel. By bringing down the diameter of the front of the barrel, it actually means that the angle it hits and deviates from the true center line is less. Kind of think of it uh, like the sh choke on a shotgun. It just tightens up the axis that the ball will leave to the true center at the end of the barrel. And again, it helps with efficiency like we mentioned a little bit earlier. So that's one of the reasons for having those, um, those different bore sizes on the front of the barrel. We also find that by having this tiny amount of porting at the first stage, when the gas is initially released at seven and a half inches in the back bore, that again slows down the gas release. The gas release comes out of the back of the barrel before the ball exits. So the ball is still sealing here when the first gas release comes out. And that comes out at a point where there's less porting and it's small porting. So again, slows the gas down, makes it as quiet as possible. And those two pieces work together when they're screwed together. So your porting begins at specifically the right point. Yes, we, have, we actually have porting in the back of the barrel which is unlike anybody else. These holes serve two purposes. One, to put an allen key and take it off there. If you get it stuck on a gun or it's on a pump gun, you can't get hold of it by the, by the facets. Okay. But also for an initial release of gas in order to help quiet it. We have um, O-ring fits at all uh, interfaces. So they screw, to, screw together and stay together nice and tightly. They don't come apart when you're playing. And so there's also one on, on the front there as well. Size of the O-rings, somebody's looking to replace them. Uh, this is a 018 and then on the backs they are 019s. Tell us specifically what somebody should get if they're going to go in a minimalistic route for a gun setup. Okay, now the barrel system is a, a three-piece system, unless you go with the carbon fiber front, in which case you'd only need the, the one front, it doesn't have the, the threaded tips on the carbon fiber front. Okay. Um, you're going to need to pick your back. Now you're going to pick your back really to fit the most common paint that you use. Um, with the way that we're seeing paint variate so much lately, the most common size that we sell is a 685, then followed by a 680. Paintballs have been getting more and more small recently. We've found that the best results you get are when the paintball is slightly tight in the backboard. The common test of actually putting a paintball inside the barrel and being able to blow it through. Um, interestingly enough, that's one of the worst fits for consistency. Because what happens is at that point in time you get a ball that's just the right fit and it's a loose fit through the barrel. You get one that's a little bit tight, it's a tight fit. So you get more of a deviation in your velocity. If you want to have a consistent gun, going slightly tight always or slightly loose always becomes more consistent. More consistency allows you to shoot closer to the velocity limit. Now you're saying pick one or the other for consistency, but which is, what would, what would you I prefer? thoroughly recommend a slight underball. By using a slight underbore, you, as long as you're shooting quality paint, you won't get more barrel breaks, you'll get better efficiency, and you'll get a quieter barrel. And so the, you and want it to be just slightly tight. for many, many paintballers, you know, underboring, overboring, yep. and you're of the school that overboring. I am. I've, I've shot hundreds of thousands of balls over ballistics chronographs. I've shot a huge amount in testing. I work with pro teams in the pit shooting the most fragile paint possible. Uh, that's how we run. So guys, if you're watching this video to, to, you know, to argue the point, that's not the point of the video. I mean, you're going to pick what you want if you want to underbore or overbore. And you have the choice. We have the parts available. You can do whatever you like. Uh, now, let's say somebody wants to go with um, you know, a, a full range. They want to buy you know, the right amount so that they're always set to go. What, what would you suggest? The one thing that's important is just making sure that your backs are always going to be smaller than the front that you're going to be using with it. Um, we do have the smaller and different bore fronts. So if you're going to have backs, you just need to make sure that your front is going to match. Um, if you only want to buy one front and then have it work with any back, you're going to have to pick the largest size, the 697, because the front should always be a larger bore diameter than the back. All right, so you got that, guys. We're going to be smaller in the back. So you know, under, not, you're not really underboring, but it's smaller in the back. 
mm -hmm. larger in the front. Yeah, so the, the, the barrel diameter should always get larger as the ball travels through it. If you go the other direction, you end up with an edge where the ball can catch and potentially that's not a good thing for the, for the paintball that can cause barrel breaks. So you should always go tighter and then looser as you move forwards through the system. If you want the best performance, you should have slightly tight in the back and then the ball should, sorry, the best consistency, which is your best velocity consistency. You should always have slightly tight in the back and then loose in the front so the paintballs will just drop through. Because we want to go back to having that 8 inch control ball without any interaction slowing the ball down in the front to get the best consistency. If you want the best efficiency or the best or the most quiet, then you can go a little bit tighter on this and you can have this to the point where it's not having the paintball just drop forwards, drop through it. Then you get a little bit more efficiency and it'll be just a little bit quieter. Typically we find with the most paint nowadays, we're selling the 689 fronts, which is a huge seller. It fits very, very well with the majority of paint, 680, 685 backs. So that's typically the most common setup that we sell. Where are the channels that people can find the, this barrel system? Um, my biggest goal is that you will go and buy it from one of our Inception dealers or a local field with a pro store that sells Inception Design products. Inception Designs really believes in the importance of the local store and the local field and we do the most that we possibly can to support them by having you buy our products through them. If you yep. don't have a local store field that supports our products, we do have it available on InceptionDesigns.com, but please support, support your local store and Inception Designs and if you can. And you've heard me carry this flag in the past. I mean, this, this industry is, is, you know, in a kind of in a regrowth point, and if we want it to do well, we need to support the paintball stores out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't buy off the internet, but if you, if you buy, you know, from an actual paintball store, you're actually improving your, your, your opportunity to get better service in the future. Yep. And it's, it's very critical that we can't tell you where we're at. It's a secret Wildlife. location. Yeah. Noisy buggers. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll put a picture of one of those on the screen later for you, and then you'll yeah, mystery will be resolved for you. No, I, I think for the health of our sport, it's very important that we support fields, we support stores. Um, it's the place you can go in. You can get local information. You can actually work with. You can see. You can handle the product. You can get great advice. Um, so please buy from your local paintball store, your local paintball field. I mean, you, you obviously can learn so much from, you know, the discussion boards and such, but, you know, there's nothing like having somebody that stand there and talk about your gear and learn more about the sport. So that's another reason why, you know, I mean, if you're actually wondering why you're going to spend a couple more dollars at a, at a paintball store, isn't it worth just a couple more dollars to improve your overall paintball knowledge over time? You know, this way you can make the decisions for yourself instead of asking somebody else to make the decisions for you. Sometimes it's nice to be able to walk into your local store and just better handle the product as well. There you go. And there's a, there's a lot to be said. That's for absolutely that. true. And I mean, the, the fact is, you know, I don't know if, the, if visually you can see it on screen just how beautiful and sexy these little barrel systems are, but you know, I mean, it's nice to have something that looks just as good as it works. We have had a lot of people tell us that uh, they were more impressed when they got to see them in person than just seeing the pictures online. Sometimes pictures don't do uh, don't do things justice. One of the things we try to do with the barrel system that's been important to me is providing the customer with what they want. Um, it's all sold a la carte. You're not forced into a buying a barrel kit if you don't really have the money, or you're forced into buying pieces in a barrel kit that you're never going to use. If you're only going to play tournaments, why would you want to buy an Apex tip? If you want to buy an Apex tip, why would you want two tips that are, you're never going to use? So we sell it completely a la carte. You can buy each piece individually, which means you can start out and get into a barrel for uh, a low price just to get the one piece, and then you can add pieces as yes. you need them. You don't have to go right out the door and buy the full kit, but obviously you can, and everything we do will always be compatible, so you can just add it as you go. Yeah, you know, it brings to mind the question, uh, what about uh, a carrying system, is that uh, on the horizon? We are working on one right now. We are working on a case. As soon as it's available, I'll let you know. There you go, guys. It's too much for any man!